Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about some of the basics of what you're going to be doing in the class and uh, how you're going to do it. So uh, if you haven't already, you should be thinking about some possible ideas for your final project and we're going to be formally exploring them this week. Uh, just some kind of housekeeping stuff. It's going to be very important that you save your files and UVA WISE has an awesome uh, opportunity for uh, cloud-based storage and you essentially have unlimited storage through Box. So if you go to uvawise.box.com and sign in using your UVA WISE username and password, this means you'll be able to access your documents from anywhere uh, and uh, you can save your, your files to Box and retrieve them. Um, there are programs that help you sync it to your home computer uh, or laptop. So I strongly recommend you use this. You will need to use it for some of your assignments as well. So most things will be submitted through Moodle, but there's a couple of things that I will ask that you uh, share with me through Box. So um, if you haven't already, at the very least, make a Box account, and I encourage you to start using this on a regular basis. Okay, the next thing I wanted to go through was the final paper rubric and expectations. So this document you can find on Moodle in the general section under finder final paper requirements and grading rubric. This is what it looks like. And so I wanted to go through to make sure everyone's on the same page with kind of what we're working towards here. So your final paper should include the following information. The total paper, including title page and references will be 15 to 25 pages. Um, so you'll start with an introduction, which will be one to two pages, um, and you'll generally use what we call a funnel format. So you're going to start with a very broad introduction to the topic, kind of the general area of interest, and then narrow it down to your specific area and subtopic. Um, so you'll probably have some basic definitions in your introduction, um, and you will have a very theor clear thesis statement that makes an a, point, a point that you're going to argue throughout. So we'll talk a little bit about this later in this video. The main body of your paper should be about 13 to 20 pages long. Um, every statement in your paper should be clearly related to your thesis, so you're going to need to keep coming back to whatever argument you've decided you're making. Uh, you will need to include at least 15 sources that are relevant and high quality. So these are sources that should be relatively recent um, within the last 10 to 15 years, ideally, um, but maybe not exclusively, uh, and they should be from peer-reviewed journals or texts. So these are our peer-reviewed articles that we're looking at. Um, every source listed in the references must be used in the paper, and sources should be well integrated into the arguments. So it should be clear kind of how these sources support your thesis statement. Um, you'll also need to include a discussion of alternative viewpoints or arguments. So you'll need to address opposing arguments as well. And then you'll finally have a conclusion, which will be one to two pages. And this will be roughly an inverted funnel format. So you'll go back to your specific thesis and then work your way out. So the bigger picture, why was this topic important and relevant? Um, it may reassert your thesis and kind of very briefly summarize your main arguments and then finish on discussion, discussing why, why this evidence is relevant. Um, and we'll talk about this as you get to the end of your paper, but uh, the conclusion shouldn't be a summary of the whole paper. It should be kind of that bigger perspective. Um, you'll also include a title page and references. So that's generally what you're gonna be working on and we're gonna spend the whole semester writing this paper. Um, I will give you feedback on multiple drafts of this. Your final draft, uh, you'll also get feedback from your peers, from two peers on this, and your final draft will go out to one other psychology faculty member to read as well. So it's not just going to be evaluated by me, but also by uh, another psychology faculty member. Um, in terms of rubric, this is roughly how your grades are uh, going to be kind of uh, laid out. So um, the thesis is really important. So that'll be 20 points um, that your aim is clear and kind of you keep going back to that. Um, we're looking for uh, organization so that you've got kind of logical flow um, and uh, you have headers where appropriate. Um, we're looking for your paragraphs to flow logically. They should have topic and concluding sentences, things like that. Um, your grammar should be correct. Um, language should be free from error. Again, you're going to need 15 high quality academic sources uh, and uh, the evidence uh, should kind of uh, enhance your thesis. So the sources should be used appropriately. 
and then your paper will need to be in APA style. So you need the, the latest, the seventh edition of the APA manual and you need to file, follow this style guide uh, and your sources should be cited um, and use in-text citations. So that is the paper that you'll be writing. Um, and so everything we do is going to be kind of working towards that paper. So the first step for this week is really about selecting a topic. Um, you're going to need to use articles to build a thesis statement. So um, I've actually asked you to, to do the opposite of this, to start with a thesis statement because it helps you narrow down your topic. Um, but your thesis should really be built on the literature. So even though by the end of this week you will have proposed a thesis statement, you might need to go back and revise that if you keep finding contradictory evidence. If your, your thesis is that parents are more important than peers in predicting success, um, and you keep finding all this evidence that supports the importance of peers, then you might need to change your thesis. And that is okay. This is a process. So in terms of um, kind of formulating ideas. One of the biggest issues is kind of uh, determining kind of what you're going to write. So you want to identify the purpose and parameter. So look back at that, that rubric that I just showed you. Um, formulate your, your question. So start out with a broad question um, and then narrow down to be more specific. Um, it's, it's much better to, to start out broad and then narrow um, that gives you kind of the flexibility you need. So your, your pre-research, your initial topic might be really broad. So you're interested in the best strategy to learn new material, but then you might narrow it to something like, is it better to study in one single long session versus more shorter sessions? Um, you also need to identify your sources. Um, Textbooks might be okay to help you pick a topic, but really you need to um, get to scholarly sources for this, this article. Um, in terms of what should you write, kind of um, if, you're, if you have a topic but can't figure out where to go with it, um, these are some ways to approach it. Um, so filling in a gap, what has been asked about a topic and what hasn't? Is there something people haven't really looked at? Um, building on a study, if you find one study that's really interesting, um, but not many more things on it, thinking about, you know, how, how can we add to that knowledge? Um, exploring um, competing theories or explanations, so kind of compare and contrast. For this paper, we've given you a couple of general topics um, that we want you to consider, so cognitive, cultural, um, developmental psychology, learning psychology, or personality. So you can think back to these classes and think about what has interested you in these, in these topics. And is there something that you can pull from these? Um, now it is essential that this is something new. So double dipping using a paper that you wrote in cognitive um, and submitting it here is considered plagiarism. And also uh, it needs to be, it can't be something that you're using for a research project or anything else. Um, it needs to be a new topic that you haven't written anything on. Okay, so this is just to give you a general sense of what the research project process looks like. So uh, you are in the pre-research phase. So you're trying to pick a paper topic um, and you're looking for general information about particular topics. So you might be brainstorming. You'll do that for your, your assignment this week. Um, skimming either popular or scholarly sources to figure out if research has been done um, and kind of trying to narrow your focus to one or a few questions. Hopefully by the end of this week or early next week you'll really get to more formalized preliminary research um, you are narrowed down your topic and so you want to gather kind of a broad range of information about this topic, figure out if your research questions have been asked and really start formulating a thesis. So to do that, you're going to kind of choose questions that seem most viable. So if no one has done any research on something you're interested in, since you're just reviewing literature, you might need to look in another direction. Um, you're going to be reading lots of scholarly sources to familiarize yourself with the topics and taking notes on the sources. Um, and then as you progress, you'll get to more focused research where you're really trying to get an in-depth knowledge about a particular topic, um, develop or support your thesis statement. So if you have your thesis statement, then you're going to be looking for evidence to support it. Um, and then finding sources that offer a variety of different perspectives because you're also going to need to mention opposing arguments. So you might have to go out looking for an opposing argument. 
Um, so once you get into focus research, you're really going to be reading these scholarly sources and evaluating their strengths and weaknesses. Um, you're going to be reading these sources very closely and taking notes on them um, and keeping track of citation information. You want to do that throughout, but this is particularly important as you're thinking about writing it in your paper. So if you have a topic, um, but you need to kind of figure out where you're going to go to get a thesis, there's a couple of ideas that might help you. So thinking about what's the big idea. Um, the subject is what your paper is about. Um, and as you get to the thesis, you want to think about things like how can I expand on this idea? How can I make it into an argument? So your thesis is the point that you are going to argue. So your thesis is crucial, and this is where I see a lot of students kind of struggle. Um, you need to make an argument um, to make your paper interesting. Um, so again, keep in mind though it might change depending on what evidence you find, but you need to start out with an argument, figuring out what your angle is going to take. Um, so what your paper is about is not your thesis. Um, saying something like this paper is about sleep deprivation and torture is not something that's going to draw the reader in. Instead, you have to make some kind of argument. So something like, even without physical assault, sleep deprivation constitute torture when it is used as an enhanced interrogation technique. Same topic, but I've made clear, here's what I'm arguing. I am saying that sleep deprivation is torture. Um, so often, um, making your subject into a thesis requires some work because you really have to think about and narrow, narrow down exactly what you're going to talk about. So this is what I want you to be working on for this week. Thinking about if you have a topic, how are you going to make an argument about it? Okay, so um, if you are still struggling with this, I encourage you to try this yourself. Um, look back at your free write. If you haven't already done it, go ahead and do the free write and just brainstorm some general ideas. Um, and then once you finish, look back at it, pick a subject. Um, you know, if you've got a bunch of different ideas, pick one of them that you think you might want to go with and brainstorm ways that you can turn that subject into an interesting thesis. What are some arguments you can make about it? Um, and, and another potential way to deal with this and help you narrow this down is to talk to peers. So I know it's a little bit more challenging online, but I encourage you to to, to find someone that you can talk to to kind of bounce ideas off of them um, to figure out how can I make this topic into a thesis. This is just kind of some, some practice that you can do. So all of these are, are subjects, right? And you can make very different thesis statements. So if you're writing a paper on gun control, well, are you going to argue that gun control is what is needed to solve all the problems in society or gun control is the problem in society, right? You can make very different, have very different theses for each of these subjects. So go through and kind of practice some of these. Um, that might help you figure out where you need to go um, to make your argument. So uh, that is the end of this video. And if you have questions, feel free to contact.